allow his presence to fill this house. Hopefully you've picked up a bulletin. If not, please get one. And that way you can see the uh, events that are taking place. And uh, one of those is this Monday evening. We're having a teacher's workers meeting. Please, teachers, workers, do your best to be here at 7 o'clock. We'll be meeting in the fellowship hall. I'd like to have everyone that can help us to uh, plan on being there. And to all of our men, able bodies, women, if you want to help, uh, on the 20th and 21st, we're going to endeavor to put the roof on the parsonage. And uh, we need help. We need help on the ground. We need help on the roof. And so uh, we can get this thing done and uh, be much in prayer. We have a contractor that's coming the week of the 16th. And we're going to be talking to him about pulling the permits for the roof on the church. And hopefully by the middle of May, we're going to be able to have the men and women act of action here. And we'll be roofing the church. So uh, help us pray that everything will go smooth. God give us favor with the inspectors and all that we need to have favor with. The 21st at 12 is our widow and widowers luncheon. So to all of our widows and widowers, we want you to come on out and be with us on that day. On May the 4th, it's going to be a barbecue. We need all hands on deck to help us sell, sell, sell. Uh, we are raising the price. We're having to. They've raised the price on meat and all of these things. So in order for us to make any money, we're going to $12 a plate. I hope that don't hurt us. I'm praying that it don't hurt us. I don't think it will hurt us, uh, especially with the portions and all that we try to give. Uh, and I can't help it that they think that the chicken and the pigs are worth more than what they were last time. So will you stand with us and... Uh, Please, please, please pick up the bulletin. It tells you about the events. And there's other things in there that's coming up, and we're just going to be celebrating. Now, let me say to all of our mothers on Mother's Day, I, I want you just to plan on being here. That's going to be on the 13th of May. Be here for a very special service. I really believe you're going to be touched, and you're going to be blessed in this service. As we pray today, Sister Carolyn Albright lost her husband, as most of you know, he passed away last night. So let's be praying much for this family, and God will reach down and touch them. Sister Garcia, she said that she's still having an awful lot of pain with her shoulder. Please, God, to reach down and touch her, that the Lord will just really uh, bring some peace and comfort there unto the body. We have a need this morning. Will you let me know by that lift of the hand? God knows all about it. Let's pray and ask for the Holy Ghost to fill this service today. Father, I'm so thankful, God, that we can be here. Lord, this is a special day. It's a day, Lord, where that we can come and we can worship you and celebrate Jesus. But, Lord, we also, did God, in this service today, Lord, we're going to recognize our missions and missionaries. And Lord, people that are so faithful, Lord, they give of themselves daily unto you. Father, I just ask you today, Lord, that in this service that you will speak to every one of our hearts and our, our hearts and our minds, Lord, will be set upon you. God, today I ask you, Lord, to comfort the hearts of these that are broken and grieving. Lord, need the Holy Ghost of heaven to move upon them. I ask you, Lord, to heal these today, Lord, that have pain in their body. Lord, as by your stripes we're healed. I'm asking you, God, to please heal. Lord Jesus, please touch today. Holy Ghost, fill this house. Lord, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen.
sisters rattling. You don't know what I'm facing. You don't know what I'm going through. Really, would God touch me? Will God send me free? Will he deliver me? Will he do that for me? Will he love me? Will he take care of me? He is our way maker. He is the father. He is the keeper of our soul. How bad do you want God to do this morning? Are you tired of the same thing? Are you tired of going through the motions? Are you tired? Are you really tired of what the devil put you through? You've got to remind him. Jesus is our way maker. Jesus is our promise keeper. For he is the light in the darkness. Do you understand? God is your way maker. God will set you free. No matter what you're doing. No matter what you're facing on the job at home. God will set you free. All you got to do is get out in that
to me just for a moment. I'm ready to preach, but I don't think that's what God wants me to do right now. I cannot get away from this. Just about ever since they started singing that song, God's been doing my heart with people that are in bondage. No, you don't have handcuffs on you. You don't have the lay arms around your feet. But yet you're not free in your spirit. You're not free to worship God. You're not free to serve God like you want to. You want to do so much more, but yet it, it's almost like that, that you just get bound. I just feel in my heart today that God's wanted to give you some liberty to serve Him and to worship Him. It's up to you, though. It's up to you. I'm not going to quench the Holy Ghost if I can help them. I'm not going to quench the Spirit of God. But I can tell you this much, friend. God is in this house. Preacher, I don't understand services like this. Well, I don't understand a lot of times when God gets to moving. But I can tell you this much that God can do far more in 30 seconds than what I can do in three hours of trying to preach and teach and try to help somebody. Because God has the key to set you free. If, and he did, took a man that had so many devils in him, I tell him whenever he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Is that not what he said? My name is Legion, for we are many. The last time I looked, that word Legion represented about 6,000. Follow along with me. I'm not saying he had 6,000 devils in him. But if Jesus could speak one time and do something that men had tried to do for years and could never do, he set this man free. He set him free. He was no longer running and living in the tombs, cutting himself, hurting himself. He was set free. Jesus wants to set you free. Jesus wants to set you free. Now listen, listen to me. There are some of you that are bound with the chains of complacency. You're still in the same place that you was several years ago. You're not gotten closer to God. And right now your heart is not even yearning for that. You're bound, but yet you know that you can get closer to God. I want you to go back and I want you to sing that, that verse. Gloria, that you started out singing. Because I want to tell you, if there's one that can touch your heart, if there's one that can heal your heart, if there's one that can set your heart free, it's God. And if you're here today and you really want God to give you that liberty to serve Him, worship Him, and get closer to Him, I'm going to challenge you to step out. I want to tell you this morning, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. You can quench the Spirit of God and you'll be the one to walk out without your miracle. Or as you can yield to him and God will give you that miracle. God will give you that miracle. He's still a miracle working God. Listen to the words of this song.
second saya ye a isekia oh saith the lord you've entered into my house today i have walked into your midst i am here to heal i am here to deliver saith the lord if you would but only receive what I have to offer unto you, I am a God that will not fail you. I am a God that will supply your every need. But you must humble yourself unto me. And if you will come to me, saith the Lord, you shall live and not die. You shall see my power and you shall live and you shall live and you shall live, saith the Lord. <laughs>
can't say I've ever had the Holy Ghost deal with me. Like he's dealing with me right now. But I feel like I have a message to tell somebody. And this is what I feel like God put into my spirit. Behold, I have pleaded and I plead this day. But if you will turn unto me with all of your heart, with a broken and a contrite spirit. Turn away from your darkness. Turn away from your sin. And seek my face. Call upon my name. With brokenness and fasting, I will come nigh unto you. But hear this. He's also said, you think that you have now walked in darkness, but the darkness that you will encounter is nothing compared to what you see now. A darkness that will be felt. A darkness that will control you. A darkness that will manipulate you is what the Lord said will take place. We know that it's the powers of Satan. But God is saying today, I will set you free. If you'll turn unto me, you'll turn unto me, you'll turn unto me. Church, I don't know who God's pleading with. I don't go home with you. I don't know the secrets in your home. But I want to tell you, God's been visiting your home. God sees where you're at. God knows what you're going through. God knows if you've been playing religion. He knows if you've been playing a game or that to your family and even to the church people, you want everybody to say, hey, I'm a Christian. But God's wanting me to let you know that he's been watching you. He goes with you every day, every moment. His eyes has been upon you. But he pleads today for you to turn to him with all of your heart. Lay it all down at his feet. Surrender it all to God. Give it all to God. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the messenger. I don't know why God's dealt with me like that. But I can tell you this much. Anytime the presence of God gets to moving like we felt the presence of God here today, God starts drawing men and women unto Him. And to those that will say, yes, Lord, He will receive them. You see, if, if God didn't want to receive you, He would never give you this invitation. He's wanting to help you. Will you sing that song one more time? We're standing on holy ground because I believe that's what this place is this morning. I believe this place is holy unto the Lord. <laughs>
worship him, things are not happening. Thank God that is happening. I know God's done some things here today. I believe he's done some things in hearts and lives of some of you that sit back on the pew. I don't ever want you to be the same again. I want the power of God just to change you. I want to be more like him. And as Saul says, I'm so tired of being stirred. I just want to be changed. Praise God. Thank God to do that work. This is our mission Sunday. Okay. And I want Sister Beth just to take a few moments here to uh, fill you in on what's going on with missions. And uh, I thank God that, that you've stayed with us. So don't, don't be in a real hurry right now. If you're worried about getting to a restaurant, you can let the first crowd get out of the way so that way you don't have to wait in line as long. So, Sister Beth. You haven't felt God in this place and your feelers broke. Oh, my goodness. God has been in this place and I have felt him for sure. Um, well, let's get the, the business out of the way. I'll tell you where we're at. Um, I don't have everything, um, but I do have some of it. So I'll tell you where we stand with some of the, the monies. And that is Brother Aviola. We've had $176 come in for him. Um, the general funds is sitting over $1,000. Dr. Hong Yang, we've had $947 come in. Uh, the Massengales, we have had 51 And for Brother Hanks, we finished off the Philippines. Um, so all that is taken care of. And I think I took my marker out. So now I don't have my marker on the spot that I was going to go to in my scripture. But I know where it's at. Um, maybe I don't. All right, well, I know it almost by heart. I won't quote it. All right, well, uh, you know, our, our goal is to let's go fishing. That, that's our, our main topic this year is to let's go fishing. But when I was in a south, we were in, in south Florida, me and Brother Anthony, we went to a, a missions conference, and one of the guys, he challenged us. And he said, he told us in, in Matthew, it tells us that the way is narrow, and few be there to find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And he said, what will it take for them to find it? If we're not willing to go to the broad ways of where the sinners are and compel them to the narrow way to find it, I mean, there's few of us that find it, then how are they ever to find the narrow way? And so our, our goal this year is to let's go fishing for souls. But let's, let's bring them in. Let's compel them. In. Let's, whether we're on our jobs, whether we're in school, we can still talk about Jesus and we can compel them and talk to them about Jesus and tell them about the narrow way so they can find Jesus in the way in which we are to be on, uh, which is which is with Jesus in heaven. We want everyone to go to heaven. So that is my mini topic for today. Well, she kept that short and sweet, didn't she? <laughs> Since that she kept it so short and sweet, I can preach now for about 45 minutes, right? Uh huh. I didn't hear no amen, so I'll go some plants. So, uh, let, let me do this this morning. I really do appreciate every one of you coming out to be with us. I want you to come back and be with us tonight. I'm just looking for God to really reach down and touch us. Uh, but I want to encourage you to really pray. Remember, Sister Sandy? Um, could we be in prayer for Sister Carolyn Hall? Yes. Mm -hmm. Carolyn Hall Britton. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we're going to keep that family in prayer. Uh, if you remember last Sunday, I told you that the uh, grandkids came down. And uh, those boys, one of the first things they asked Sunday afternoon when they got here was, Papa, are we going fishing? And this is going along with what Sister Beth had to say. We're talking about missions here. I took them out on, uh, I think it was Tuesday morning. And we fished here. And we fished there. We tried this. We tried that. And we picked up a couple of little ones. And. And uh, Kyle called him a garfish. Oh. Those of you that know anything about gars, they, they, uh, they're mean. Yes. All right. I don't like handling them. But once he got him in the boat, he said, "Papa, I want to keep him. I want to <laughs> eat him." I said, "Well, if you'll help me clean him, I, I'm telling you that I'm not so sure it's worth it." Mm -hmm. But uh, they are pretty good eating, by the way. Uh, but then. After that trip, they said, we want to go again. And so I got out Wednesday. You know, 
we got church Wednesday night, and I need to do this and do that, and, and Thursday, and, but Friday morning we got up and we went fishing again. Now, I want you to listen to this. You have to understand that these two boys are energetic, and they can cut off more lures and tie on new lures in a fishing trip than what you can ever think about. And Kyle knew how to cut them off, but he didn't know how to tie them back on. And he is a papa. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to get to do no fishing here if I had to keep tying these onions on for you. And, uh, but nevertheless, we kept trying new things until we finally got something that started hitting. And then one would say, I just got a hit. And we didn't get a fish. I got a hit. The next thing you know, we got a fish. Okay, you still follow along with me? Yeah. And so we, we picked up a few because we felt like we found something that they would begin to hit. And we came around the bend and we found this place where I think all three of us going through there had caught a fish. And if you know Kyle, when Kyle gets something on his mind, Papa, we've got to go back there. Let's go back. Let's go back. I said, we will. Well, we, we went back, and this time we anchored. And we caught one fish after another. And Kyle said, that's a honey hole. That's a honey hole. <laughs> if we're going to go fishing for people, number one, if what you're trying to use is not working, ask God to give you another bait. Yeah. All right? Several years ago, when we was all home, my sister had a dream, and she went to talking in her sleep. And she told my other sister, she says, I'm fishing. She said, where are you fishing at? She said, I'm fishing in a milk jug. She wasn't catching no fish, fishing in a milk jug. You can go to a lake, and you can sit in one spot, and you can say, Lord, send me the fish, send me the fish, send me the fish. But if you're not getting no hits there, move on. That's right. In fact, Jesus taught the disciples. He said, you've got to go back out. He didn't tell them right there on the shoreline, drop your nets and I'll fill them up. He said, you get back out into the deep, drop your nets. That's where the fish are. There's two things. Ask God to give you the right bait. And ask God to give you the right place. Yes. Amen. Colt was already saying, Papa, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> he's not the fisherman that Kyle is. And if he's not putting something in the boat, he's ready to go home. He's one of those dudes that he eats his lunch for breakfast on the boat. Right. And he's not full. <laughs> he's ready to go home. But when we started catching fish, he stopped saying, I want to go home. He'd tie on another lure. He'd tie on another bait. Why? Because he's catching fish. Don't get discouraged. Ask God, give me the right bait, and God put me in the right place. Because there are fish to be caught. And as Jesus told his disciples, I'll make you fishermen of men. God wants to make us all fishers of men. Amen? Amen. So maybe God wants you to smile on the right side instead of the left side this next time. Maybe God just wants you to pat somebody on the back this time instead of shake their hand. But whatever it may be God leads you to do, do it and expect God to do the rest. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Our ushers are going to come at this time and I want them to receive this special offering today. It's for missions. Any, what we call loose plate, any cash, anything like that goes in here. It, it is for our general missions and and God helps us in to put that where it is needed to go in our mission program. But also, if you uh, are given to the building fund, if you're given tithes and offerings, make sure that you put that in a tithe envelope. Okay, and mark it as such. That way we know where everything is going. And just to let you know what's going on, the building material for the church and the parsonage is supposed to be in on Tuesday of this week. So we're moving forward with it. That's going to be much in prayer. Uh, they're, they're giving us a few days, just a very few days, to come up with the money to pay for all of this. And I am praying. I want you to pray with me. You say, preacher, I don't have nothing else to give. 
that you don't worry about. I pray God help us not to have to borrow another dime. Amen. I want to get all that we've already got borrowed. I want to get it all paid off. And I want the little yellow house paid off. I want what we had to borrow for the parsons paid off. I want the furniture paid off. God help us not to borrow another dime. Yes. And I believe that God is going to help us to do that. And uh, right now, though, you may say, Brother Spratlin, we need a miracle. Well, we serve a miracle-working God. And I believe that. If you'll do what God lays on your heart to do and somebody else does what God lays on their heart to do, the need is more than met. Thank you so much for being sensitive to the Spirit of God. And uh, I want you to bow your heads and we're going to pray. Father, I thank you today that I have this opportunity to give, Lord, to you. I thank you, Lord, that I have this opportunity today to give to missions. God, I, I think about the, these men that are that are giving their lives. And God, they're going into places. And Lord, some of them are not just traveling back and forth from the U.S. over there. God, they, that's a residence. That's where they've made home. God, that's what they call home now. I just ask you, Lord, to please that God move upon them. God, to touch them. Lord, bless their families with strength and bless them with health. God, bless them financially to God that they can stay there and work for you. And God will fail not to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give us unto the Lord. Please remember Sister Carolyn L. Britton and the family in prayer, uh, Sister Garcia, uh, Sister Coleman. Let's remember all of these in prayer that God will just reach down and touch them. And there's there's many other needs. And I know a lot of you have special needs. We have people that have financial needs, people that are uh, battling things in their homes, and they need a lot of guidance there. I just ask you to be much in prayer for all of them. Will you stand with us this morning? Please do your best to come back and be with us tonight. I want God to, to speak to our hearts in a very special way. Don't forget about our teachers and workers meetings tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. Hallelujah. Brother Ed, will you pray for us? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the outpouring of your spirit this morning. Father God, we just praise you for every life that you've touched this morning in this place. And those that are not in this place but were under prayer. In the name of Jesus. Father God, bring us back tonight praising your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ Almighty.